Hey guys, in this video we're going to discuss a supplement that actually works, creatine monohydrate. Creatine use became popular by athletes after the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona and by the time of the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta, approximately 80% of all athletes were using creatine. When first introduced, it was hailed for its steroid-like effects on muscle size and strength. The majority of these early claims, however, did prove to be false, but to this day, creatine monohydrate remains one of the most widely used supplements by both recreational users and professional athletes. But what exactly are the benefits of creatine supplementation? Like many athletic supplements on the market, creatine has plenty of anecdotal claims on its effectiveness. However, unlike other supplements on the market, there is a lot of scientific research backing up these claims. Supplementation of creatine has been shown to help with body composition, performance, cognitive decline and neurological disorders. However, in this video we will be focusing on the use of creatine supplementation as an ergogenic aid for high intensity exercise. First of all, however, we must discuss what exactly is creatine? Is it steroids like your mom and your granny think it is? Or is it something a lot different. Well, creatine is a naturally occurring compound present mostly in muscle tissue. Creatine is already present within our bodies, it is naturally synthesized by the liver and is used as a fuel source for a lot of tissues within our bodies, not just muscle tissue. Our body makes it on a daily basis. So if we already produce it within our body, what is the point in supplementing with it? Well, humans produce creatine within their bodies and obtain it through their diet, primarily through animal sources, but the problem is we do not get enough to support an increase in sports performance. Although it is also important to note that if you're a vegetarian or a vegan athlete, you will likely be getting little to no creatine at all in your diet. Even for people who do eat meat, the research has shown that the cooking process degrades the creatine content of meat and in reality, to get the standard maintenance levels of creatine, 3 to 5 grams a day, you would have to eat about 1 kilogram of raw beef every day. Not only would this be very costly as well as unpractical, but it could be potentially very dangerous as well. This is why we supplement with creatine. When talking about creatine as an ergogenic aid, there is little evidence to support that creatine supplementation boosts stamina or performance in aerobic activity. However, there is evidence that creatine supplementation can benefit athletes doing high intensity exercise. Our body utilizes different energy systems. There is an aerobic set of energy systems, anaerobic energy systems, and then are very fast, very high intensity energy system known as the phosphocreatine system. When thinking about how our body performs work, we must think of it in terms of availability and sustainability. We know intuitively that for high intensity exercise, for example when we start sprinting, we cannot maintain that level of high intensity exercise for a long duration of time. We need a high amount of energy immediately and that's exactly what the phosphocreatine system does. It gives you energy immediately, but it runs out quickly, i.e. you can't sprint forever. Hence why anaerobic athletes such as sprinters and weightlifters supplement with creatine as an ergogenic aid for this energy system. Creatine also pulls a certain amount of water into the muscle cells for every gram of creatine stored on a muscle fibre level. Loading creatine does increase muscle fibre diameter due to an increased muscle hydration which may lead to an increased rate of muscle growth due to stretching of the muscle cells. Creatine increased hydration can influence muscle growth, however the main reason participants will see increases in lean mass when supplementing with creatine is due to the performance benefits, i.e. being able to use heavier loads and greater volumes of work within their training which in turn will lead to increased rates of muscle growth. Initial weight gain of 1-2 to two kilograms on average can be expected from creatine supplementation. This initial weight gain is due to gaining water weight, not gaining muscle. In terms of dosage, there are two typical protocols for athletes to follow. These are creatine loading, i.e. taking 20 grams of creatine per day for 5-6 to six consecutive days in a row or just taking a maintenance dose of 3-5 to five grams daily. 
Creatine loading will get you to the level needed for a performance enhancing effect about two to three weeks faster than taking a maintenance dose of just three to five grams. But for the average athlete or user, this does not mean much in the long term as it's only affecting one to two weeks of an athlete's entire training career. Several concerns are often raised about the apparent side effects of creatine, such as stomach bloating, cramping, and diarrhea, though there is little evidence supporting any of these claims. There has been evidence, however, to suggest that creatine supplementation for athletes with unhealthy kidney function may lead to complications. However, for participants and athletes with healthy kidney function, creatine monohydrate supplementation will have no negative side effects. Thanks for watching guys. You can now share this video with your family members who keep telling you that creatine is steroids. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe. We're gonna be posting regular content on training, nutrition, and supplements.